Here we go, Johnny Mac Football 24-7 across the Jacob Media YouTube channel. It is game day from MetLife Stadium. The road to 500 football begins this afternoon. And Johnny Mac checks in uh, live from MetLife Stadium as the inactives come out. Johnny Mac, um, anything to anything worthy of note from um, a Giants perspective, is Saquon Barkley uh, going to play? Is uh, Kadarius Tony going to play? What's that offensive lineup look like for the Giants? Yeah, that's the bigger one. And obviously, I have the Eagles inactives. The Giants just came out, so I'll get them in a second. I'll try to uh, uh, check them as we're doing this. Now, uh, before Saquon Barkley was supposed to play, unless there was some kind of setback, so I'm assuming he's going to be out there. Kadarius Tony Doubtful, uh, most likely not going to be out there. So uh, that was the way it was shifting earlier this morning. Uh, from the Eagles' perspective, obviously, Jordan Howard, we already knew, was ruled out, and uh, everybody else is the, the same uh, types of players. Mac McCain back. Uh, off waivers, uh, Tay Gowan types, Marlon, Tui Pelotu type players. So nothing large uh, from the Eagles' perspective. Uh, they're very healthy as as a whole uh, for this part of the season, this late in the season. Um, and, you know, they have this back-to-back -back trips, sort of the Frank Sinatra portion of their schedule, New York Giants followed by the New York Jets. They have a very, very late buy, and the fact that they're so healthy this late in the season is is a really positive aspect of what's going on here. John, let me get uh, see if there's any speculation around uh, the press box this morning. Uh, of course, during the week we talked about Jason Garrett uh, being fired um, as the New York Giants offensive coordinator. Um, Report this morning, at least on NFL Network on Sirius XM 88, general manager Dave Gettleman um, not returning or considering potentially to not return uh, following this season. Any scuttle around the press box from uh, what you've been able to hear so far since you've been there? Yeah, I mean, that, that's that been going around for a while. That's one of those things. And actually, the NFL Network also reported this morning that uh, the Eagles are considering going with Chandler Hurts long term. Uh, and they and they mentioned the same with Dave Gettleman. And sort of when they report things, uh, then all of a sudden it, it, it develops into something bigger. Uh, those stories have been out there for, for quite a while, for a number of weeks. Uh, it is expected to be the last season for Dave Gettleman uh, as the general manager of the Giants. I don't think he's going to get fired. I think it's going to be one of those situations where he quietly walks away, uh, retires. Uh, but the Giants are, are, are obviously struggling from the <clears throat> standpoint uh, of their organization. And this has been going on basically since they moved on from Jerry Reese. And uh, if you want to think about the um, – the Tom Coughlin uh, era, uh, and they've been um, unfortunately mm -hmm. trying to rescue things from a head coach perspective, whether it was Ben McAdoo, uh, whether it was Pat Shermer, now Joe Judge. Um, the GM uh, and, and the organization has not been the same, uh, and they have to shift gears again, and that's part of the problem. I always talk about continuity in this league. Giants had it for a very <laughs> long time with George Young into Jerry Reese, Bill Parcells into Tom Coughlin. Uh, and they had a lot of success. And now they don't have it, and they're not having a lot of success. And there is a direct uh, causal connection between those two things. So you got to get it right, but you got to be smart enough to know when you, you've got it right and you've got to sort of circumvent the, the difficult waters because – we all know everybody's impatient fan bases in the NFL. They want success early, uh, but the Giants have struggled for a long time now, uh, and and there doesn't seem to be much light at the end of the tunnel right now. 
One last thing on the Giants, and then we'll jump to the Eagles and get some uh, updates and some thoughts from you about this Eagles team as they come in and look to go uh, and get to six and six. Uh, Joe Judge, of course, the head coach, has he uh, – who's going to call the plays uh, for the offense, for the Giants' offense today, John? Well, <clears throat> Joe has been trying to play that competitive advantage card that we've heard a lot from Nick Sirianni at times this year. Uh, it's going to be Freddie Kitchens, though, the former uh, head coach, former offensive coordinator first in Cleveland. Then he got the head coaching job uh, for one year. Uh, he's going to be the guy. He's called plays in the past. He's been a senior offensive assistant. But, you know, it's a short week for the Giants. They played on Monday nights last week. Um, and you also have the Thanksgiving holiday. So it's not like you can make drastic changes to the offense. It's going to be the same team, the same scheme, the same verbiage. Uh, but as Nick Sirianni points out, you know, if somebody is different is doing it, even there's going to be some differences. There's going to be some interesting tweaks. And the Eagles went through this a couple of weeks ago from a different perspective. Uh, Pat Shermer in Denver wasn't able to call the plays uh, because of he, he tested positive for COVID-19. So last minute, it shifted to uh, Mike Shula. Uh, and it was different, a little bit different, but you can't change the offense. So it, it's going to be the same offense. It's just going to be somebody different calling the plays. And uh, look, I've talked about it a lot. It, it's a sign of desperation when you make that move on a short week this late in the season because you're not going to be able to accomplish much much with that move. Football 24-7 with NFL insider John McMullen, proudly presented by Stateside Vodka. Johnny Mack, I spent some time this morning uh, listening to uh, you and Jody on Birds 365 uh, and throughout the week. Uh, leading up to this game, this is one of those handle your business or your business will handle you uh, type of games. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I've called it a, a take care of business portion of the schedule. Uh, the Giants are struggling. They're not a good team. Um, the Eagles have gotten sort of this break in the schedule after having a very difficult start to the season, whether you talk about the two Super Bowl teams, Kansas City, Tampa Bay, we know all the difficulties uh, and all the struggles they had early in the season. A lot of that was due to the schedule, and the schedule has softened up. It has lightened up. Uh, they're facing teams. You can tell by the betting line. They're now favored in these particular games. They're favored because they're the better team. And, look, it's always the NFL. Uh, anybody can beat you, so you do have to handle your business. If you show up with your C game, so to speak, you're liable to get upset. But if the Eagles play like they have been over the past month of the season, this is a game they should win, and this is a game they should win pretty easily, to be honest. John, with the offensive line playing so well right now, um, I almost wonder if it doesn't really matter uh, who's running the football. But then I tap the brakes and I say, well, OK, Jordan Howard's out and he's not going to be in the game. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Miles Sanders obviously will be in the game. He's a very different runner. He doesn't run in between the tackles or doesn't like to be in between uh, the tackles. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means, um, but what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you punched out there for a minute, Johnny. I have you back now. Did you catch my question at all or no? Uh, yeah, it was about Miles uh, versus Jordan Howard and their style of running, I believe. And, yeah, I mean, it, it is a little bit different, but Boston Scott is still here. And even though you, you think about, and Boston's had a ton of success, by the way, uh, over, against the New York Giants over his career, his best games had generally come against the Giants. I, I think people don't think of them the same way because Jordan is this big back and Boston's five foot six. But from a stylistic standpoint, 
Boston's the same kind of runner. He hits the hole very, very quickly um, and, and at times effectively. Uh, and he tries to go north, south, downhill. A- everything that Jordan Howard um, gives to this offense, Boston Scott can, can do it at least in the short term. So <clears throat> there is a concern that, look, Jordan has played well. Jordan has had a nice little run here. Uh, but the Eagles were intent, and, and Nick Sirianni was very honest about it. Look, Miles Sanders is the guy. Miles Sanders the number one running back. They won him back in the offense anyway. So his role was going to increase as the season wore on. And both the roles of Jordan Howard and Boston Scott were going to decrease if everything went to plan. Um, now, he had some ball security issues last week, but he also was effective running the football. So you kind of hope that um, some of those ball security issues were due to uh, his stint on injured reserve. Uh, maybe he just had to knock a little bit of the rust off. Um, but, you know, Miles was the way they were going to go anyway. So I don't think much changes. Johnny Mac, how many touches did Miles have uh, in the game last week? I had 16 runs uh, for 94 yards. Um, so, again, very effective running the football. Now, part of that, let's be honest, he fumbled uh, early in the game and that set up uh, uh, the first touchdown for New Orleans, and it was a bad fumble deep in the Eagles' territory. And he got bailed out for another fumble by a quick whistle, which was also deep in Eagles territory. So, you know, they moved into halftime and they started Boston Scott in the second half and were mixing in Jordan Howard. They essentially benched Miles, uh, at least for a portion of that game because of the ball security issues. Uh, But then Jordan Howard got hurt and he was forced back into the game. It was very effective. So, Maybe that was a little bit of a positive that he had to go back in the game and he had success <clears throat> running the football. Now, second problem, the Eagles were very upset late in the game. He ran out of bounds again. He did that twice in Carolina when they wanted to, to churn the clock. Later. So they, they benched him. They took him out a little bit for that as well. So there's all these little issues with Miles Sanders, but – from a talent perspective, uh, he's their best running back, and it's not close, to be honest. John McMullen reporting live here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel from live at MetLife Stadium. Don't forget, as soon as the game concludes, uh, John McMullen will join Derek Gunn, Mark Farzetta, and Devin Caney uh, as the live postgame show kicks into gear, hopefully talking about a team that's back to 500. Uh, with the Jets on the horizon. Uh, Johnny Mack, last thought from you, or last couple of thoughts here offensively. Uh, what will we see uh, from Jalen and Nick Sirianni and uh, and his offense today? Uh, will it be a duplicate of what we watched a week ago? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you look at the past month, and that's when the shift happens uh, from more of this RPO uh, pass-driven offense to this uh, more run centric philosophy. Uh, if it's not broke, you don't fix it. The Giants, uh, it, it's not a terrible defense, but it's also not a great defense. They don't do a, a great job against the run. Their best run defender, uh, Blake Martinez, is on injured reserve. He's gone uh, for the year. So uh, there's no reason to think that the Eagles will not have success running the football against the Giants when they had such success running the football against the number one ranked run defense in the league last week, the New Orleans Saints. So more of what you've seen, and that's uh, a heavy run emphasis, and when they do pass the football, you're going to see a lot of Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. Big Chris in the chat watching the uh, live version of Football 24-7 referencing, and I'm paraphrasing his words, but, hey, this is a division game. You know, foot on the gas. Let's get in. Uh, as you said, Johnny Mac, handle your business. 
uh, and get out of Dodge. Let's get back to Philadelphia, even at 500. Yeah, I, I, there's no, uh, a, again, there is no reason to think that the Eagles uh, shouldn't have a significant advantage in this game. Um, if they bring their A game, if they play like they have been, um, this should be uh, a relatively easy game when you think of it from an NFL perspective. You know, I always say it's not college. You're not going to beat somebody by 40. Uh, but you should win this game by double digits. Obviously, the Giants are in disarray, um, not only from a coaching perspective, but also from an organizational perspective. Uh, they're banged up. You're not. No reason uh, to not win this football game. Well, on that note from John McMullen, we thank Johnny Mack for checking in here with Football 24-7. Uh, we'll check in with Johnny Mack live from MetLife Stadium uh, for his uh, updated halftime report. And then, as mentioned, uh, we'll see Johnny Mack, or hear Johnny Mack at least, uh, from MetLife Stadium on the live post-game show. Johnny Mack, great stuff this morning, brother. We'll talk to you at halftime. All right. Thank you, Krause. All uh, right, good stuff from John McMullen. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, as you join the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Big football game today. Go Birds. Let's get a win. Let's get back to 500 and then set our sights on the division. We'll see you at halftime back here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel, all presented by Stateside Vodka. Don't forget to go to statesidevodka.com. Use the key phrase Jacob and get 15% off of the Stateside Vodka Soda. Until we get to you at halftime, go Birds.